welcome to my channel. My name is Betsy, and today I'm talking about begonias. Cane begonias, to be specific. My subscriber, Opalescence, requested that I do a video about my cane begonias and how I care for them. So, here it is. The thing about begonias, I think, is that once you start, you, you find one begonia, and you're like, that's kind of nice. I like that one. I wonder what else there is. And then you discover that there are like over 1,800 different species of begonias and you just kind of get lost in it and you're like swimming in begonias and then suddenly your name is Betsy Begonia and you're like making YouTube videos about begonias. And they're like begonia societies for crazy people like me who just love begonias and they're, they're weird about begonias. That's the thing about begonias. But today I'm, I'm just talking about cane begonias because I have two types and Opalescence requested that I specifically talk about cane begonias, and if I talk about anything else, then this video might go on forever. So, let's keep it simple. This one is uh, Begonia maculata whitey, and then I also have this gigantic beast, which is Begonia tamaya. You can see it has the polka dots, but the underside of the leaves are not that sort of bright red crimson color, like with the be uh, Begonia maculata whitey. They're called cane begonias because they have really thick stalks that are kind of like canes, like the kind of bamboo-like. Uh, if I can get a good... <laughs> the leaves are always in the way. Always. But yeah, you can see this one, it's like one of its stalks. It's very thick. And you can see on the inside that I keep mine supported with stakes. Cane begonias are originally a tropical plant. My cat is digging around in a litter box, as usual. Every single time I want to make a YouTube video, it's litter box time! Cane begonias are originally a tropical plant, so they have a few basic requirements. One, they need high humidity, 45% and above is preferred. They need a lot of bright, indirect light, although they can take a little bit of direct sun. It can't be like really, really hot afternoon sun that's going to cook their leaves off. They need a lot of water. As soon as the top of the soil starts to dry out like half an inch, it's time to water the plant again. And then the last thing that they require is a lot of good air circulation around the plant because they're a bit susceptible to mildew. They like things on the warm side, like us. They're a tropical plant, and mine have done really well in my apartment all summer long where temperatures have been between 20 degrees Celsius and 34 degrees Celsius, which is like 68 to 93 degrees Fahrenheit. They do really well in that range. Anything below 60, they're not going to grow very well. They're kind of going to suffer. They're definitely not frost tolerant. Uh, and they don't like cold drafts. They prefer higher humidity, so I keep mine 45% and above. In the kitchen, I keep my Begonia Maculata Whitey near a humidifier, so the humidity is a bit higher in there. It's usually like 55 to 70% humidity around the plant, and it has really thrived in that environment. They, they like to be a little bit root-bound, and the problem with that is that the pot can get really small in comparison to the growth. Um, and so it can be a really top-heavy plant. So it's better to, to, instead of choosing a plastic pot, choose like a wooden pot or a, like a heavy ceramic pot or something like that to keep the plant from toppling over or just keep the plastic pot inside like a heavy decorative pot. Otherwise, it could fall over. But if you do repot, you should pick a quick draining, really airy soil. I would just use a regular houseplant mix with like a lot of perlite thrown in because even though the plant does require a lot of water, uh, you, you don't want the soil to remain way too wet for way too long. As with most houseplants, that's kind of the general rule. Is there a problem here? Are we okay? Hello? Where are you even? And why are you... Well, I don't know why my cat is meowing and also... Oh. oh, you're such a big kitty. This kitty loves to interrupt my video making time. What was I saying before I was so rudely interrupted? Soil? I think I was talking about soil. You have to kind of find this balance between using a well aerated, quick draining soil and watering your plant enough that it doesn't, you know, like totally dry out. If the leaves start turning yellow and they fall off, you're overwatering. It's too much water. Quit it. For fertilizer, uh, I use just a regular green houseplant fertilizer. 
anything that's on sale at the garden center and I dilute it to half and I fertilize every two to four weeks. Propagating these things is easy as pie. Super easy, super easy to propagate. Some people say that you can use root hormone and put it on the thing and then put it in the dirt and then like after two weeks tug on it in a little and if it doesn't pop out of the soil, like just forget about it, just put it in water. This is about two weeks in water. That's it. I think that's everything. I think I covered everything. Bright indirect light, some direct sun, but very little, and don't let them cook in a west-facing room or a south-facing room in the afternoon. Don't, don't let the sun cook your plant. High humidity, 45% and higher is preferable. Aerated soil, keep the soil moist, not soggy. Super easy to propagate, and I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comments below. I will absolutely get back to you. If you have suggestions for future videos, feel free to suggest anything. And if you like this video and you want to see more plant videos in the future, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks again. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Have a good day.